I'm gonna give you a tour of some of the books that I've made over the last year and a half to give you um, ideas and inspiration and possibilities for what you might explore as well. So I will scooch, these are just some that I've made. I've made maybe 30 or so books at this point. So I'll show you, I'll flip through each one. This is one of uh, that I made out of the, the first fabric that I used, that gray linen curtain that I mentioned in the introduction. So this one was from the strip where the curtain rod goes through in the curtain. And I had just cut the section there and kept, this is the lining that was there, this white piece. So I just kept it intact and then bound it, reinforced the stitching there to make a book structure. And I used some yarn uh, to do the couching technique and then did some straight stitches in the middle there. And some birch bark that I stitched down and did some uh, running stitches in the background. And this is some amazing hemp thread or twine that has this great texture. It's kind of rough, I love it. Did some straight stitches in the background. I think kind of look like rain falling, I like that. And this is a little scrap of linen. And the back is interesting too. I love the backs. And then this one is, um, I made out of uh, a linen curtain. Nope, napkin, I think. I can't quite remember. Some, some kind of secondhand linen. And did just some um, straight stitches with some sashiko thread. And I started, I think down here, and just slowly traveled all the way up. And what I love about doing the single stitch sometimes is that you get all of this amazing variety that's different than doing the running stitch. And you'll see as you go, if those are new stitches to you, you'll learn in this class how to play with both and practice both. But I love all of the little moments and variations in here. And I thought the back too is incredible. Love it. And then I decided I wanted a little more breathing room on the next page because that one was so full. So I did really tight clustered together stitches, again with Japanese sashiko thread, and played with changing the direction of the stitches, doing kind of this, like there's an imaginary line there. Most of the ones on the bottom are vertical, a lot of the ones on the top are horizontal. Um, and that happened just through the play and experimentation in the moment. And then this is a little scrap from a pair of pants that I hemmed. Again, I love the back there. And then I did the seed stitch here with the same color thread. And you can see the seed stitch there. And then I glued down a little piece of cheesecloth that I had dyed with some ink. And when I flipped it over, there was an open space because it was glued down and not stitched. So I decided to respond to that open space by gluing down a little scrap of fabric from a napkin that I had put some stitches through. So that was fun to have this become another space where I could add something. And again, the back is so cool. And these are some scraps from some napkins. And you can see on the back, because the thread was white and the fabric's white, Get a really interesting effect. I love that. And then this is an early one that I did out of a shirt that I found at a thrift store that was super soft, but the fit was weird, so I decided to cut it up and try making a book out of it. And this is the hem that I just stitched down. And I decided after I had done this that I wanted to make see if I could make a whole book with just one color thread and just this fabric. So I gave myself that container to play within. So on each page, I experimented with different ways to stitch. I love the backs. Again, my favorite. And then I wanted to play with just doing a really quiet stitch. And I consciously cut these pages so they would be irregular like that. I wanted to see what would happen. I did some organic circles that were inspired by stones that I keep on my table and look at all the time. Hmm. 
and then a really quiet moment to end it. This was the first book where when I did these quiet pages, I thought, oh, that's kind of like it's a like they're a poem. And then I started pondering, like, could stitches be poetry? Could I approach stitching as if I were writing poems? That Those questions just kept kind of floating around me then as I continued to stitch and experiment. And then, let's see, this little one is also an early experiment made with secondhand linens and various fabrics. And I made this little tie wrap. And on the cover here, I all of the thread is from um, tea bag strings. And I show how to do that in the class too. And the wrap stitch binding here with a little line of straight stitches there. And on each page in this book, I decided, again, I wanted to give myself just a little prompt or assignment gently to give myself some kind of container. So I did, decided to do one scrap of fabric on every page and played with the, changing the shape each time. And you can see that's a mix of a seed stitch in the middle and then straight stitches in the back. Look at that wild back. I love the backs because they are such an important part of the creative, my creative process, my creative story. And I, I don't want to cover up something that is, that would be seen as messy or, you know, I don't want to try to make things look perfect when actually this is part of the story and this is part of how this, this is that story too and by revealing that it is inviting you into the whole process but there's also mystery here and um, intrigue and I love that this is a map of my choices but I have no idea where I started and where I ended you know I could never retrace my steps but it's still a map of those creative choices and there's something really powerful to me in that metaphor of of revealing more of the story and not trying to make things look perfect, um, really revealing the vulnerabilities and the depth and the messiness and having that be beautiful. So that's how I think about and approach and ponder the backs of the pages. So I just continued on here with different scraps. Here I traced some of the outlines of that pattern with thread. Here on this page, I decided to, to play with going around the border of the edge with a little wrap stitch. That was fun. I like that little pop. And I love this wrap moment. So that's that one. And I'll show you a few other early ones so you can see the evolution. So this is one that I made um, out of a scarf I found at a thrift store that I accidentally shrunk. And it had a really cool black and white pattern that you can't even really see anymore. You can kind of see it back there. It was like all these zigzag patterns. So I, this one, I wanted to challenge myself to do, try it like patchwork quilting, basically that kind of look all over the entire surface. So I chose different fabrics that I liked um, together. And then I cut some circles, some strips, some different shapes. And I started just one at a time. So I started in the corner and stitched this one down. And then I added this one and then I just kept building. And I consciously tried to vary the stitches so it wasn't perfectly even. And um, it had a cool effect. It really does feel quilted. And you can see on the back how much, look at all of that. Whoa. And this was an experiment with different kinds of threads and scra laying scraps of fabric over each other. So I wanted to see what would happen if I kind of built these little overlapping sections 
this one, look at how wild that is. You can see how like these books are much louder than the books as I progress. I get quieter and quieter with the story. Um, this one is very much a work in progress. And I wanted to play with doing the seed stitch in the back. And you can see it's kind of like puckering it, which was okay. And here, um, this is too wild for my eye now. But it was fun to do some experimenting with different stitches. And same thing here, I did the same patchwork idea. And I mixed in some papers too. You can stitch papers into these books just like you do with any of the fabric. And this is a lot of different scraps of the same color that I wanted to play with doing the same idea of patchwork. You can see all the stitches that happened back there. And then same thing here. So this is a lot of different smaller pieces that I stitched that down. So that's a, look at that, whoa. So that compared to like what I'm doing now, which is like this, this is one of my buried books. So I buried, so far I've buried three books in the ground for 30 to 45 days. I made this one out of a linen curtain and with Japanese Kogan embroidery thread. And I weathered the pages with stones. Again, all things that I show in the class. And I love all of these marks came from it being in the ground. But I've definitely simplified my style since I started experimenting with this process. I love the simplicity of just a few stitches, lots of breathing room. So you can really take this in any direction that you want or whatever emerges. I'll show you the other buried books too. So this was a very um, kind of bright aqua. It was a indigo dyed linen and I stitched with some Japanese sashiko thread and all these holes are from it being in the ground. So some creature chomped through it. All these dark marks are from the earth too. And I had a stone here and I ended up pulling it off after I pulled it up from the ground, actually multiple times. This book has gone through many evolutions. Originally it was a piece of sea glass the first time I buried it. Then when I unearthed it, I decided to pull that sea glass off, add in these back stitches, and then add a darker stone. And then when I dug it up the second time, I could see some of the glue in the back and that was bugging me. So I decided to pull it off and now I'm gonna reattach it. So these books for me continue to evolve. There's not really, um, for a lot of them, a clear end point. And this is a couching technique with some secondhand yarn and um, persimmon dyed Japanese sashiko thread. I love the back of this one. And then the last buried book is this one. So I made this one also out of um, more of that linen curtain that was dyed with indigo. This is a little meditation bead from uh, Nepal little lotus seed, a uh, lotus flower, seed bead, seed bead. <laughs> and I played with uh, just experimenting with different stitches. And I liked this, creating this line. Again, happened completely intuitively as I was going, but then having that kind of blank space there where the little closure, even though it's not a closure, but that kind of moment I enjoy. And all these darker marks are from it being in the ground. And this one has also continued to evolve. So originally I had white thread on this circle and I decided to pull it out once it came out of the ground because I love these dark brown marks from the soil. So then I decided to use some of this thread, the persimmon dyed uh, Japanese sashiko thread to respond to those marks from the earth. So. It's a continuing conversation that's really fun, has an amazing texture. And this page is in process. So originally I had this pattern back here and there was a little scrap of fabric underneath there that I had stitched down. When it came up from the earth the second time, the first time, I decided to pull that off. And now I'm covering up some of these stitches and we'll see where that leads. And the last page here, that little hole is from some creature. 
having a little snack. So those are my buried books, which I love. Those are my favorite, I think, so far. And then uh, this is a scroll book. So this is um, a format I'm really loving too. I made this one out of two dish towels that I um, painted on and black printed on. I'll show you. So I had done, I carved a linoleum block of a poppy a few years ago and stamped it onto a, a dish towel. And the back one is a dish towel that I splattered with uh, textile paint and had them as dish towels for a while and decided they were ready for a new story. So this one is a long format and it's got multiple books within a single book. Oops, there's a little flap there that, there we go, and then it lifts up. I love that circle there, that moment. And then there's one more at the end. And this is such a different experience than the other style. So I really love that this whole interactive play. I have to roll it back up. I love how the stitches look on the outside too. And then I took uh, the edging of the hem of one of the dish towels and did some stitches through it. I talked um, talk through how to do this technique in one of the videos. And um, this is one more that I'll show you. I've got a few more I'll show you for fun. This is one that's in process. It's uh, made with vintage Japanese mosquito netting that was hand woven and hand, um, hand spun, woven, and dyed with indigo. It's hemp. And I love it had these holes in it. It's from the 30s, I think. And the texture is incredible. So I've been slowly working on this one. These are meditation beads, the same lotus seed ones. And these ones you can move up and down. I'm experimenting with that at the moment. And then I've done some couching here that's also in process. And what I really love about these books is that they continue to breathe. So I'll set this out and I have multiple ones going at the same time. And there's no rush at all to finish them. So this one will sit and evolve over time. I've got probably three or four that are in various stages of their story, their conversation. I like to think of it as a conversation with these materials. And this is one I'm also working on that is a two-page book. It's made with uh, indigo dyed linen that I weathered with stones. These are scraps from um, mosquito netting as well from Japan that's made out of cotton, so it's a different texture and different color. Um, and then little bits of indigo dyed nettle yarn that I did couching with. And I put a little feather here, and this is a little book within a book. So this opens, something will go there eventually. And with this one, I wanted to play with the tone on tone. So doing an all blue book, which I think I'm really liking. And then this is one that I made out of um, scraps from a pair of pants that I hemmed. And I really loved the colors. And I also love that it had these circle shapes. So I decided to respond to those first. I hemmed the book or um, found the book, the wrap stitch. And then I just traced the circle shapes. And then there was this empty space here. So I thought, okay, what could I do to play with the circles? So then I started making a tiny circle and then this emerged and that tiny circle. Again, I love all those frayed edges. So then I continued to play with the circle theme. And same thing. This one's still evolving. I feel like it still has more to say. So we'll see what happens. And then I'll show you a really different style. 
of one for the last one. So these ones are, you know, very bold and graphic. So these are with these various scraps that I had and I made a mini me, <laughs> mini version. So I took four different kinds of fabric that I had and did various stitches responding to the patterns that were there. And I made the big one first and then I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cute to do a tiny one? Cause I still had the fabric. So I made in the same order. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> I love the idea of a mini book. Um, so those are just some of the books that I've played with. What I love about this process too is that there are no rules. You can, like, I really give myself the freedom to just create with whatever I'm feeling in the moment. So oftentimes it's these quieter books right now. It's these um, solid fabrics, vintage fabrics, but also sometimes I just crave pattern and bright color. So then I'll do something like this. And I love having that freedom and permission to do whatever I'm feeling in the moment and allow that to evolve and express through me. So those are just some of the books that I've made. I hope they inspire you as you get going into this class and you can always come back to this video and revisit them as well. And I'll share a link on my website where I have photos of a lot of my books so you can look more closely at them if you want to for ideas.